Note, this video is part of a larger series on speed solving the FTO. Click the playlist link in the description to see the rest of the videos. The second center. It might seem a little bit silly that I'm making a separate video on just this step, but it really is needed. Despite its superficial similarity with solving the first center in the first step of the solution, it does demand different technique, and there are many things that we can take advantage of in this step that can be very crucial to a solve. So let's go over the scope of the second center in the context of the entire FTO solution. Let's go ahead and backtrack just one moment back to the first two triples. Now, when we were doing this step, remember that we had our first center completed and we were forming the triples and placing them next to it to form that trapezoidal block. But there's something really important to notice when we're doing this step here. As we form our triples, you might notice that all of the pieces that are on these three faces right here, these pieces that are going to form our equatorial centers, they never actually change to other faces, right? All of these pieces that were here are still going to remain here no matter how we do these turns. What this means is that as we are completing our first two triples, we can actually look at these faces and look at the resulting pieces and pairs and so forth that we have with our triangles and our edges and effectively look ahead into the second center the entire time. This is a really useful technique and can greatly reduce the pause in transition from the first two triples to the second center step. So things to look out for while you're doing first two triples are traps or pairs that can be formed into traps very easily. So as an example, we can follow, say, this pair or this trap as we're doing these triples here. And we see, for example, when we just formed this triple, that we just formed this pair right here with this edge piece. So when we go to insert this triple, it doesn't change. So, for example, we could immediately see this and go for it as we are completing our second center into the next step. See how seamless that is? It's a very useful look ahead tool and will definitely help improve not only your transitions, but also your ergonomics as well. It's also useful to keep in mind that when we're doing triples, any pieces that remain in this middle slice layer here, or come into the middle slice layer, will remain completely unaffected with our moves, as you can see. So for example, if we have a large trap that just happens to come together while we're doing first two triples, it's very easy to preserve it when we're finishing that step. And then you can go straight into doing a small trap, for example. So here I'm just giving you some things to think about, really. Like I was saying earlier, we can take advantage of things when we're doing this second center, especially in relation to the previous triple step. All right, enough about look ahead. Let's talk about some ways that we can form our second center that optimize efficiency. The first and foremost thing that you should definitely try to implement with your second center solves is the idea of center neutrality. That is, that you can solve your second center on any of the three colors. In my case, these are green, red, or blue. And being able to do this allows for much shorter move solutions on average because you're more likely to get good cases. For example, on this particular scramble right here, the green center is not very good. Even though we have this pair right here, we would have to do u prime r y u prime r prime to form any sort of trap with it with this gray edge. So that's quite a number of moves and not very ergonomically friendly either. Blue is a little bit better. As we can see, we have this pair and then there's this pair over here. So we could do r y prime u r prime to form a large trap on the front. And that looks like this. So that's three moves, a little bit of an improvement. But by far the best centered color choice here is red. As we can see, we have this edge and this triangle opposite of each other, but we have this pair down here and we have this pair right here. And we can actually form our large trap in only two moves by doing U R prime like this. And as we can see, that actually also brought together this small trap for us, which is great. And then we can simply bring them together very easily. So by being able to choose any color for your second center, it means that you're more likely to get good cases. In fact, three times more likely because there are two more chances for it to happen. For the longest time, I was only red for second center, and trust me, I'm so glad that I switched to center neutrality. Now let's talk about another technique that we can use to greatly help improve our move counts, and that is the technique known as half centers, as named by Edward Dibley. This involves having or easily solving a large trap on one center color, 
then hiding it and going on to completely do a different center. What this does is it gives us a free large trap for our last two centers step of the solution and it will allow that step to be many fewer moves and also many fewer wide moves as well. So let's see if we can produce an example of that. Well, okay, I see I have this green edge here and then this green pair over here and we can actually do R prime U to very easily form a large trap that goes into the middle slice layer. So we can do that here. So now we have this large trap on green, and that's only two moves very quick. And I saw that the, a lot of the red pieces were coming together really nicely. As we can see here, we already have this large trap on red, which is great. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to preserve this green large trap and just keep it in the middle layer over here. And then we're actually going to solve the red center as our true second center. Now what's important to keep in mind here is that the placement of these traps has to be correct. So on my color scheme, this face is green. This face would then be red. So this is placed correctly. You don't want to just blindly solve your large traps like this because if you accidentally get the colors on the wrong faces, it completely ruins the point of doing it. But anyways, continuing on from here, so I'll go ahead and preserve this large trap on red. And then we'll go ahead and finish off this red center. So now we can see this red center is solved. And normally we would orient it. So this is our second center right here. And now as we can see, we have a large trap done on green over here for these last two centers. And this means that we can go straight into the solution for that without any hesitation. Now, of course, this does not mean to use this technique every single time. Sometimes your large trap solutions are ultimately just inefficient and you can't really form a lot of pieces together at a time, in which case you should really just focus on only one center. In the last two center step anyway, you already have all of your pieces bunched up together on only two sides, so it's easier, in fact, to form them into their traps. These techniques are powerful, but you don't want to abuse them, otherwise it could come back to bite you. Just like with the first center, if you find that you have a wrong color scheme on any trap, you can again do a similar sort of thing to get yourself to a correct color scheme. You can either reposition your pairs differently with a different edge. For example, we could take this pair and put it next to this edge to get a correct color scheme for this large trap. Alternately, we could just simply reposition this small trap to be on the opposite side of this edge. And that also gets us a correct color scheme. So as you can see here, again, there are lots of ways to deal with these cases. It's certainly best to go for the one that is either fewer moves or has better ergonomics. All right, so now I'm gonna go over a couple of cases that might come up, which are very useful to know in case they happen. So this first one here, we have our second center almost completed here, as you can see, but we're missing just one triangle piece. Now this is kind of similar to what we had on that first center, but we can't just do that sledge trick because actually if we try to do that, it messes up our first center. Remember that in the second center step, you can only do U, R, and R wide moves to preserve that block. First, we position the triangle directly over the slot. In this case, the empty triangle slot is on top. So we're going to place this triangle directly towards us like this. And then the sequence goes like this. We first bring up this pair, orient it, then bring the triangle back down. And as you can see, that forms the small trapezoid instantly. And then we can just drop it in like that. On the other hand, if the slot is at this bottom right position right here, then we want to position the red triangle over here in the back end. And we can do a similar sort of thing. We bring up the pair, reposition it, bring back down the triangle to form the small trap, and drop it in. So that's only a five move sequence for this, and it's quite a good case to know. Here is another situation that you might come across where we have the triangle here, and then we have the edge and the other triangle opposite of each other on this side. Now, you might think that we have to go through the whole complicated thing with that last two centers of positioning it here, bringing it up, bringing it back down, repositioning and putting it in. But again, this can be done in a much faster way because we have freedom given that this is only the second center. In this case, it's actually okay to directly form the small trapezoid. So we can do from this angle, R, U, R prime, forms the small trapezoid, and we can drop it in just like that. In this case, it was okay to do that because this was only the second center, but that does not work for the last two centers. So don't try to do that trick for that step because you will just completely muck it up. Finally, there is this case where we have a missing edge and we have the two triangles right here. 
There's another nice way that we can solve this one. We can first make sure that the red edge is not here, but in one of these positions. Then we can do R, then either U or U prime to position the red triangle by itself here. Then do an R slice prime. Then we can reposition the red triangle from here. R slice back. And there's our small trap. So that's pretty much it really in terms of second center. As you can see, it is definitely similar and has similar ideas to the first center, but there are other ways that we need to handle cases to again, keep the block preserved or to just take advantage of certain things that can come up. The most important thing for this step really is to have good, fast recognition and to be able to bring together your pairs efficiently. The fewer wide moves you use in these equatorial centers, the better off you will be. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out the others through the playlist link in the description. Wait.